Welcome to Grays Lake. This is one of the nicest parks in the Des Moines Parks and Recreation System. It's a hub of activity. Many people come out here every day and walk the loop around the lake. One thing uh, that we thought would be nice as part of our continuing environmental education program is to help people know what trees are walking by. Tree identification can be tricky, but sometimes can be simple. And even in the winter, trees can be identified. This phase of the course, we're working on simple to identify trees in the winter, which are about the simplest to identify there is. And particularly this tree, maybe the simplest tree in the universe to identify, these enormous thorns on a bark of uh, a tree like this are uh, indicative of the honey locust. And there's not many trees in the world that have thorns like this, in particular in the United States. If you see a tree like this, you can rest assured it's honey locust. Uh, Gladitia tricanthos is the Latin name, and tricanthos means three-thorned because some of the thorns even have branches. These thorns are grown by the tree for protection against herbivory, everything from mastodons in, in the uh, archaic days to um, smaller things nowadays, buffalo and maybe rabbits from the young trees. This pre prevents them from getting chewed on or at least deters chewing. Gray's Lake is near the airport, which it causes the trees, <laughs> airplanes to fly over too. Another course we're going to be doing is plane identification. Back to trees. Um, this tree is also called honey locust. So one of the reasons for that is the pods, not uh, anything to do with the tree, but the pods that the tree grows as fruits after it fruits in the spring are these long kind of tortured looking things. They have large beans inside. The tree is a legume, so you have a pod that looks a lot like an enormous green bean. These also are a source of nutrition. You can see this one. Every little seed has been chewed out of it by some animal. Um, they are using those because probably because that's a high source of, of protein. Uh, the name honey locust, however, came from these pods in that the meat in between those seeds is very sweet. It was used by everybody from the early Americans to uh, early pioneers as a sweetener in uh, uh, medicines and things that they did. Now they also had some uses for these thorns. As you can imagine, they're useful for the tree. They're also useful for humans in the early days when you didn't have access to you know, your typical Walmart to go and buy things. Um, these were used as pins to hold clothes together. This tree was also called a Confederate pin tree uh, because the soldiers in the South asked, actually used the, the, the needles um, to help hold their clothes together. The needles have been used in carting cotton in the South and holding together the bags of cotton once carded. And they also were used as um, uh, little tools for microscopy people in the early days needing to, to manipulate very tiny things. These very strong points were very um, long-lasting, so they were very useful. And a final use for these is a loggerhead shrike. That's a bird. That's a bird of prey, but it's not very strong uh, as far as being able to hold on to things and pull them apart. So it actually is famous for impaling its prey on trees like this in barbed wire and using that as an anchor while it pulls apart its, um, its dinner. So, um, fascinating tree. Um, you have to kind of get to your inner botanist to truly love uh, thorns like this, but they are actually indicative of the honey locust and very useful. Welcome back to tree identification, winter tree identification to be specific. This tree is not easy to identify. This is an oak tree. Uh, to actually find out specifically what oak tree it is, even in the summertime when you've got acorns and fresh leaves and everything you could need, it can be very difficult to identify oak trees. On top of that, they form hybrids, and so sometimes you can't identify them because their, their um, characters are a mix, mix, characteristics are a mixture of two different species. However, in the wintertime, if you see a tree, particularly a younger tree, that's still got some leaves on it in the winter, it's probably an oak tree. There are some trees, we'll show you a sycamore in a little while, that, that does hold some of the leaves, but oaks are more famous for that. And uh, so you can at least get the fact that it's oak. You may not know if it's a red oak or a white oak or specifically what kind of oak, but at least you know it's an oak tree. However, with red oaks and white oaks, there are those are the two large groups of oaks. There, there are an actual tree called a red oak, but then there's the red oak family that could contain several other trees, pin oaks and several other species. The same for white oak, that could be a bur oak, a white oak, a swamp white oak. But if you can find a leaf and the, the edges are smooth, there's another airplane. This Grace Lake is close to an airport, so frequently we have airplanes coming overhead. Uh, if the leaf's edges are lobed and not coming to a sharp point, there's no little kind of hair coming off the points, um, you can be pretty sure that it's in the white oak family. This one probably is a swamp white oak, particularly since it was planted here near the floodplain. Uh, that's a likely tree that would be planted here. But trees hanging on, leaves hanging on in the winter, oak tree. Fun thing to know, in the early spring when leaves finally drop, um, that's a great sign of spring because that means the bud, which is formed at the base of the leaf, has finally swollen up enough that it's starting to produce new leaves and the old leaf has fallen off. So those are oak trees. 
Okay, here we are with another one of our easy to identify trees, even in the wintertime. This is uh, not actually a native tree to Iowa, it's uh, a crab apple, which is in the Malus family. And uh, crab apples have been hybridized um, and hybridized uh, by, for people that are selecting for the flowers, because they have beautiful flowers in the spring. Obviously they're easy to identify in the spring, but even in the winter, if you see a tree, generally a small tree, they rarely get very large, that has little berries looking things still hanging on it, that look like little bitty apples, um, that's a crab apple. These uh, historically crab apples um, put, produced a much larger fruit that were actually of great interest to animals and birds that uh, would of course eat them. And uh, these are quite bitter, there's not much fruit uh, flesh left around them, so they tend to stay on the tree all winter, which adds to an, an interesting um, look. And then uh, it's interesting in the spring sometimes, uh, finally um, animals that are hungry enough will finally eat the berries. Or um, there's a, a type of bird called a waxwing, there's both cedar waxwings and bohemian waxwings. When they're migrating back north in the spring, they will sometimes land on crab apple trees and clean the whole tree off. You'll see a whole flock of birds in the tree just having a good old time and that'll let you know it's a crab apple. Okay, this is another one of our easy to identify winter trees. This tree is a cottonwood, famous in the spring for that, that fur of dust that can uh, disappear everywhere when the seeds fall down. And in Gray's Lake here we often get little drifts of cottonwood seeds in the spring. But in the winter when you don't have that benefit, uh, it's still easy to identify this tree. If you see an enormous tree that's got really wide um, flat spaces on its bark, so, you know, more than a, an inch wide, um, so very coarse bark, and in particularly in the flood zone, it's most likely a cottonwood. Easy guess anytime there's a tree in the flood zone. This is Populus deltoides. Uh, we're going to show you the buds. They're very distinctive. In uh, another minute, we have a smaller tree we're going to go to. They're uh, very large, one of the largest buds that you see on, in the tree world, and they're an interesting source of nutrition. A lot of animals eat them throughout the winter and uh, we'll show you some on, on branches next time. Here's another easy to identify winter tree. This is a river birch. It's another one that if you see a tree growing down in a floodplain, an easy guess. Uh, river birches are like the white birches that you may be familiar with if you've gone north of Iowa, Minnesota, Michigan. They have white, 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 white bark that peels and sheets. River birch does the same, only the bark has got more of a cinnamon color to it, and it doesn't peel in such large sheets, and the, the, the bark below is um, more of a brown rather than the dark black like the birches of the north. Another distinctive feature are the little catkins that hang down. These uh, are the male catkins formed in the fall, so they're there all winter, look like little hot dogs or something hanging from the branch tips. In the spring, these will elongate and send out pollen at the same time the female catkins are formed and allow fruit so. So river birch, Betula nigra. Here's another tree that's easy to identify in, at, in the winter. This is a sycamore, American sycamore. Uh, it's a distinctive large tree, some of the largest trees that we have. The uh, upper branches are often uh, quite white. They um, uh, lose their bark as they get older, as, as they grow, and uh, you can see the white. You can also see the um, effect of the bark peeling off so that there are sections that have uh, a lighter gray and a darker gray, just several gradations of color, that often make it look kind of camouflaged, like a soldier's uniform or somebody in hunting clothes. So American sycamore, you can think of this as a camouflage tree. It also, normally in the winter, is covered with uh, these uh, little balls like this, which are actually a collection of thousands of seeds. They, um, this year we didn't get any seed set on these trees. Uh, we think it was because it was so wet in the spring that there's uh, a disease that sets on the leaves frequently, an anthraxnose, uh, that one way or another caused them to not set seed. American sycamore is closely related to a common horticultural tree, the London plane tree, which is a hybrid between the sy American sycamore and a European species. Those trees usually have these, these balls hanging in sets of two. On American sycamore, they're generally single. So that's another easy to identify winter tree. So here we are with our final easy to identify winter tree at Gray's Lake. This is a cottonwood. We already showed you the very, very large cottonwood that uh, is easy to identify just by size and the bark that's uh, so deep and so furrowed. But these, these buds are extremely distinctive. A very large end bud and then these little side buds are more oppressed to the, the branch. They're a source of food in the winter and they're a source of identification for humans in the wintertime. If you're walking by a tree and you see buds like this, um, just look a couple times around the lake and you'll be able to identify cottonwood very easily. Okay, so for a wrap-up of our easy-to-identify winter trees for our Gray's Lake Environmental Ed program, we have honey locusts, which had the very large thorns on a large tree. Here is even a small tree, and you can see those thorns are pretty interesting. And there's one there that's already started to branch. And remember, it was trichanthos was the species name. The honey, the honey locust also has very large pods. 
that have uh, nice edible um, seeds inside that are good for wildlife and that was the source of the common name. Next up we had oak trees which were the ones that held their leaves throughout the winter and had two types of leaves either pointed tips or smooth tips. Then was a crab apple which has the tiny little berries on it throughout the winter. And then the very very large tree in the floodplain was the cottonwood which um, when you can get to the branches they um, have very distinctive buds on them which are also nutritious animals in the winter time. And then American sycamore which has uh, the large uh, seeding fruiting bodies hanging off it which are thousands of little seeds singly for the American sycamore and in twos for the London plane tree which is not native. And behind us you can see an example of a very large sycamore. They too also hold some of their leaves throughout the winter and have the very distinctive white upper branches. So thank you for participating in the Grays Lake Environmental Education Program.